Hi guys. It is trying to turn into a pleasant spring day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization where we have somehow slogged into. It is a Monday. It is a Monday, uh, April 10th, 2022. And so uh, <coughs> I want to thank Alert Tribes, uh, Alert Listener, Brother JJ uh, from... Uh, uh, in the Finger Lakes of New York, my dear friend, uh, Brother JJ, for sending me what was going to be yesterday's doomsday sermon, but since I was been out partying like it's 2019 with my lovable, clueless friends here in the great state of Texas, uh, no time for doom and gloom with all the parties going on around here, so uh, I'm going to have to give you our Sunday Doomsday Sermon, a dollar short and a day late. And I, and I think that uh, Brother JJ might have found the queen of the Doomer Chicks. Uh, this woman, I have never heard this woman's name in my entire life. Completely unaware of this, uh, uh, of this fellow collapsitarian's existence on the planet. She is definitely a woman I do want to meet. She, uh, she takes the word doomer chick and puts it on steroids. This woman's name, who I've already forgotten, is Sarah Baker. Sarah Baker describes herself, I am an adult female of medium build who has interests and likes things. Some stuff I don't like. <laughs> and uh, Sarah Baker, I guess to celebrate April Fools, has written an essay which I guess uh, is just on uh, her own website. Uh, it's, it, this is from Medium. Dot com. Her blog is on medium.com, and I have signed up for her blog, but in this uh, April, this column titled April Fuels, April Fuels, uh, Sarah Baker pulls out all of the stops. This is not a shy woman. Sarah Baker has done her homework she probably has about 300 uh, links in here. It would take me probably two hours to read this screaming diatribe filled with more F-bombs than uh, Putin is dropping on Ukraine right now. Uh, profanity laced, I am going to edit out the F-bombs uh, I'm just going to dive in. All right, guys, I, I, I'm pretty much just diving in uh, to the middle of this full-scale frontal attack on everybody from planet eaters to uh, little greeny uh, mainstream environmental uh, hopium addicts talking about cheering on this Green New Deal crap. Uh, and just clueless morons in general. Uh, I think April understands she is preaching to the choir, so I, I'm, I'm just going to dive in and read a short selection from this book-length uh, screaming rant, and you can go on the link and take it from here, but just to give you an idea of what you're getting yourself into, by diving into the Sarah Baker uh, world. All right, starting, as I say, just anywhere along in the diatribe. This is a quarter of the way through it. <clears throat> you know, she's talking about denial. But I don't think it's denial exactly that's at play here. It's grief. Denial is one of the stages of grief for sure, but so is bargaining, and there is a lot of that out there right now. Just the ridiculous 
and dangerous idea that a quote transition to green energy close quote is going to solve much of anything the ipcc report from she's talking about the one last summer this was written right before the last one she's going back to last summer uh, the ipcc report from last summer said that global emissions must peak by 2025 and i think it's the one that they repeated that last week in order to have a 50 50 chance of staving off one and a half degrees of warming this is considered to be the temperature we must stay under to avoid widespread catastrophic runaway global heating that is not going to happen not not the right well okay make sure we understand what the that is referring to uh it's not the, the, what's not going to happen is emissions peak by 2025 is what she's saying that is not going to happen you know it will not happen there are zero signs of slowing down energy production manufacturing consumption travel factory farming fast fashion war award shows etc now of course the one uh the the one subject even sarah baker will not touch in this article is breeding is overpopulation apparently maybe sarah has another i do not know if sarah is a breeder uh, so you won't find overpopulation on her list of things taking down the planet but despite that oh that little blind spot she hits the, most of the other nails on the head okay the fossil fuels just required in the setting up of these promised centralized renewable energy systems renewable energy systems all the new mineral mining and construction needed for such a colossal endeavor would put us way off track of ever ever reaching that goal of peaking by 2025. you understand what she's saying that just the fossil fuels we will be burning in the next three years to get us off of fossil fuels is enough to take us past one and a half <laughs> I, I, I like this woman well not according to this one scientific paper that she has a link to it which estimates that the infrastructure needed to quote transition don't you love that word transition to a renewable energy grid would quote require less than a year's worth of co2 emissions close quote but to laser focus only on emissions is not helping us grasp the whole scope of this problem hmm like not even close by doing so it creates a painfully myopic view of what is actually going down we have compartmentalized ourselves into a box here a sterile box that we have been led to believe exists outside of the earth's life support systems outside of reality yes uh forget transitioning off of fossil fuels and onto renewables we are failing to bring up the real transition that needs to happen we need to transition the f off of this entire mfing crumb bum way of life no amount of green energy will accomplish this goal it is called 
green energy because it is going to make a shit ton of green backs for basically the same effing group of low-life asshole people <clears throat> who made a fortune off fossil fuel extraction. And they're only, and they meaning uh, renewables, and their renewables are only called renewable because they renew our faith, that shady corporate hack of a crazy chemicalized civilization is cool and normal, yes, and can just go on in perpetuity without consequences just as long as we fuel the destruction in a different way that's actually the same way that allows unearned guilt absolution. So, the only thing truly sustainable about green energy is that it sustains the illusion that industrialized humanity can carry on operating completely out of sync with the natural world and without any meaningful, healthy, respectful, interdependent relationship with nature and with others and with a near total discounting of all the oppressed slaves required to do the nitty-gritty physical work involved to maintain this industrial nightmare. <laughs> There is a great sentence. I would love to diagram that one sentence. Sure, once this fantastical new green energy system is in place, it will put off less emissions than its fossil-fueled predecessor, but the road to get to this new system, no pun intended, because many more actual roads will be needed, will be paved with unimaginable destruction, death, pollution, exploitation, slavery, neocolonialism, theft, inequality, and further uglification of the beauty that still remains. The more one wakes up from this fever dream and the more sane you become, the more crazy you feel. <clears throat> if we are serious, if we are serious about actually healing and preserving the Earth's biosphere, ugh, what a terribly technical and unpoetic word for this freaking miracle. And not just for humans or for certain humans, but for all life. Then this civilization must stop. Like grind to a halt. Green energy will not stop much. It will not stop the Amazon from being turned, from being burned down to create grazing space for cows. It, meaning the green energy revolution, will not stop car culture and all the road building and maintenance involved. It will not stop animals from being hit on those roads. It will not stop data centers required to keep the internet going. Uh, it will not stop 
plastic pollution. It will not stop sweatshops. It will not stop lawns or light pollution or soil erosion or food waste or overfishing, or homelessness, or the churning out of the endless parade of electronics constantly in need of upgrading. It will not stop police shootings, or mass incarceration, or millionaires, or billionaires, or spousal abuse, or sex trafficking, or cancer, or junk mail, or the unnatural inefficiency and isolation of the nuclear family. It will not stop species extinction, or deforestation, or landfills, or endocrine disrupting chemicals, or wet markets, or bio labs, or pandemics, or testing on animals, or the fact in 2020 a boundary was crossed where man-made things now outweigh the Earth's living things. And it definitely will not stop the military industrial complex. That paper, you know, the one she was making fun of, concludes that, quote, our civilization shows that about 25 gigatons of CO2 will be emitted to build a 100% renewable uh, system. Currently, the world emits 40 gigatons of CO2 annually, close quote. But, it's important to remember that one of the biggest emitters on the planet is the U.S. military, but their emissions are not factored into global emission numbers as if they don't count. Yes. All right. Then she, good Lord, she has all of these videos and papers and links. Good Lord, Sarah. A very serious problem with all of these scientific papers and studies is that they are highly specialized and fail miserably at any kind of systems thinking in, in seeing the big picture that renewable that renewable energy paper that we, uh, that she just tore a, a part makes no mention of all the sacrifice zones that would be required to mine the bonkers amount of materials needed for this new infrastructure. No mention of all the habitat that would be destroyed all the pollution that would result, all the water required, all the traditional and indigenous and impoverished people that would be royally effed over in some way, just adding more trauma to the, the most traumatized among us. Yes, in the schizophrenic 2020 article in Nature titled, Quote, renewable energy production will exacerbate mining threats to biodiversity. They say that switching to green energy is necessary to avert the worst of climate change. But that article also says, quote, mining threats to biodiversity will increase as more mines target materials for renewable energy production and without strategic planning these new threats to biodiversity may surpass those averted by climate change mitigation hallelujah that was from 2020 in nature magazine 
that we are gaining nothing. The green energy transition uh, to save this planet from fossil fuels by moving it it, 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 it is the single essential bright green lie of the 21st century. It is unadulterated, uh, corporate, greenwashed, hopi and soap bullshit. Uh, whoever this Sarah Baker uh, wants you to know this. Uh, we're going to go on a little bit more, Sarah. I think you get the uh, idea. <clears throat> of all the millions of animal species on God's green earth, only one, only one of the millions is under the impression that it needs to produce energy outside of what they can make with their own bodies and with just leaves and shit. Beavers do damn rivers like us, but not in a way that kills the life in the river, but actually adds to it. We are so entrenched, so invested, so addicted, so ensnared by these industrialized systems we live by that require massive inputs and enslavement. If we pull the plug on these artificial life support systems, many of us will die. But if we don't, then we will also die. Wow. But this is not a damned if we do, damned if we don't situation. Don't let the human supremacy you have been steeped in fool you. Because if we stay plugged in, not only will we die, but countless other life forms and even entire ecosystems will die too. Pulling the plug may kill some of us humans, especially those most dependent on these artificial systems keeping many of us alive, but at least other species will have a chance. And that is the book hermit argument. Uh, anyway, guys, it goes on and on and on. Uh, Sarah Baker, uh, my new uh, Doomer Chick hero, I wonder if Sarah Baker lives anywhere near Ithaca, New York. She would, uh, Sarah Baker would be run out of uh, Ithaca, New York. You know, one of the uh, green energy transition capitals of the world with those little uh, uh, mainstream environmentalists running around there in Ithaca, New York, talking about how we're going to save this planet by digging up the planet I, it just it, 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 anyway amen brother sarah brother sarah amen sister sarah uh long may you live long may you rant and preach to the choir i'm gonna put the link on here so you can uh read the rest of this two-hour diatribe against the green uh the green energy transition and all the rest of it she has a lot of great quotes in here it, it, you could probably spend days just following her links so anyway good for you sister sarah if i ever interview anybody again on this channel i'm going to start with sister sarah not much hopium not much hopium Anyway, with that, I got to wrap this up because I, I think I have some farm-raised catfish thawing out of the kitchen, and I'm ready for some farm-raised catfish. Bye, guys.